and Green can now take the speed up. But first, he would need to paint himself a racetrack. Being out in the desert is like being out in the open sea. There are no features at all. Uh, it's the reason we come here. It's perfectly flat, it's perfectly featureless. There's nothing out here for 10 miles. The car leaves ruts in the desert. We can't run over its old ruts. So we have to have a series of parallel lines in the desert. We put them 50 feet apart simply to give us a clear track each time. What I need is then uh, 10 miles of straight white line and then 50 foot across another perfectly parallel, perfectly straight 10 miles of uh, white line. And that's really what we're doing at the moment is actually trying to paint a perfectly straight 10 mile white line, which sounds quite easy until you actually try and drive dead straight for more than about 50 feet at a time. It gets very difficult, especially when you've got nothing to follow. Along each 10 mile track, every loose object which could damage the wheels or go through the engines has to be picked up by hand. It's known as fodding, another job for the loyal supporters. We're here for dining, but um, it's also my fortnight's holiday from summer holiday from work, and uh, it's a lovely way to spend it because you get plenty of sunshine. We're back on about six, are we tonight? Yeah, yeah. Before it gets dark. It's a good fire, is that, Ken? Yes, I don't know that problem. I'm a good firemaker. Well, oh, I've got the wood. Bloody back wood. to the grindstone on Monday, Tuesday. Bank holiday in. Uh, last night on the prairie, my son. Oh, last night. It should be champagne, this really. Well, it's beer though, if you want it. Have some beer for If later. you're not a Muslim, you can have some. You'll have some for later. That'll be better. All right. Day by day, the temperatures are rising. The next morning, computer man Jerry Bliss discovers the heat is an even bigger problem than they had feared. One of the onboard computers, Comp 2, has failed. They won't be going faster today. This Comp 2 is, is seriously damaged by the heat, in as much as... Uh, Gets damaged or is damaged. Is damaged the heat. It, it appears that uh, we've dropped out two power supplies which are rated to drop out of 100 degrees centigrade, which means that inside the bay it's getting close to or at 100 degrees centigrade. So we may be down to just today, we may be down for three days. It's such a life. Mm. The first run we did, we were late getting out and we didn't run until midday. The temperatures were enormous then. We are, however, always out here at four o'clock in the morning, as you well know. <laughs> and um, what we're trying to do now is, as soon as there's sufficient light, we'll run for our, we'll, we'll start rolling to the start. So we're ready to start as soon as possible. Still, the temperature rises and time is running out. While they struggle to repair the damage on the car, they attempt to repair the desert by simply filling in dips and holes. The weather is unbearable. I was out this morning, out in Andrews, doing the uh, tracks and everything, laying the tracks. I couldn't have stuck it out there much longer. We had to come in. I mean, the midday heat here is, I mean, it's, it's well, well, 125, I think someone recorded this morning, and it's unbearable. You're just cooking out there. You've got to come in and get away from it. Just drink loads of liquids. Dawn. And finally, Thrust is ready to run at speed. The whole team prepare. On a run day, we get out of bed at three o'clock. <laughs> Dark. No different than getting up at five o'clock, basically. Once you, you're awake and you're out of bed, it's just a normal day. I get really nervous as soon as they say over the radio, you hear SSC ready to roll. It's like. SSC South Sea, vehicles are clear in the area. You have one shot on the right wheel. Once you've seen it once, you just can't. You never get sick of it. You never get sick of seeing it. And once it runs in the desert, well, that's. It's just incredible. It's an amazing place, an amazing thing to do. Mill power, 120. A little bit of fish turning at the back, settling down, 175. Peak at 196. Feels awfully quick. She's so beautiful, I mean, the colour's lovely. She makes you all goosey pimples. 
<laughs> Look, I've gone goosey pimples now. That's a beautiful car. And we're going to do it if we have to push it. 250, drifting left very slightly. The speed rises to 300 miles per hour. But at this speed, steering becomes a problem. The car doesn't want to correct for some reason. Hey, can you pull the protects, please, Robert? Yeah, put them. Yeah. I think take, take them out. Just Merlin, back at your location. Just thought you were to... Okay, Merlin. Feel landed. Didn't correct as quickly as I was hoping, oh, but I'm being very gentle with it. To the left at, yeah, uh, and I put in points. about 40 degrees of steering input and it just sat there. There's still a question mark there, um, and it took a long time to actually recover. He drifted to the left of track, and then he applied a steering correction to come back onto the right, but it didn't appear to happen immediately. The question is, why didn't that happen? No one knows how serious a problem this is. The theory is, with its huge aerodynamic tail, the faster the car goes, the straighter it will run. They decide that tomorrow they'll go even faster and see what happens. I mean, every day we're moving into the big unknown, aren't we? So, I mean, we, we, we've got to expect problems all the time, I think. If we don't get a problem, we've had a result. Taxman's taken all my dough. He's left me in my... This is the boys' life. They get good food all the week, and they do like, what they call it junk food, chips. They do love their chips. Please confirm, A, that you've got the, the facts and it's come through all right. All I've got is this sunny afternoon. Lamb or the other one? Lamb or the it's other one? It's not beef. It's not beef. It's not beef. You've probably seen the front page of the Independent. Apparently, we have a major picture there. Could you the stars? Today, Andy Green is aiming for 400 miles per hour. Way off the line. Not a very good one. There's a cyst dump. Cyst pressure still looks good. Three and a half to go. Three and a half to go. Late on the shoot. And it's still wobbly as fuck. A lot of dust in the cockpit. Oil. Shut the engines down at a hut cut. Breaking hot. He's reached 410 miles an hour. But going faster hasn't solved the steering problem. I'm having to put massive corrections into the steering to keep the car going in a straight line. Every time I stop giving it this, the car just and it goes. It is unstable. Okay. It's just the rate and number of steering yes, inputs indeed. is yeah, a lot. I appreciate that. I appreciate so apologies for drawing wiggly lines 10 or 15 feet off the white line. That at the moment is the best I can achieve given the, the, the workload in the cockpit. What about aerodynamics then? I, I will get be better in by now. as mm -hmm. I get more oh, used to the right. profiles, as I get more used to the steering. Right. But it is very hard work. We always knew that rear wheel steering was going to be difficult to achieve. We're the first people ever to do this. We've been to the best uh, in Britain and they've half of them said it can't be done simply because it hasn't been done before. We've taken the approach that a bit like going supersonic on land in a car, just because it hasn't been done doesn't mean to say we can't do it. I do feel a lot of pressure. Uh, when things don't go quite right and there's question marks, then it's, it's sheer pressure because uh, it was my idea and uh, I stand by it. There's nobody else to blame, just me. <laughs> when they inspect the car, they find a part of the rear suspension has broken, but no one knows why. A new piece will have to be made. It's yet another delay. It's like this. But what has damaged the car? Designers Glyn Bauscher and Ron Ayres search the wheel tracks for clues. 